I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker of November's Attack Con Power Hour, Ali Mellon from Cyber Reason. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I'm especially honored to be your first speaker, even if that's just because they went alphabetically and my name starts with A. I've lucked out because of that before. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about mapping the EventBot mobile banking Trojan with MITRE ATT&CK for mobile. A little background on me before we dive in. I've been in tech for about a decade. Um, I spent five of those years actually as a mobile app developer. So I have a real appreciation for mobile as its own industry and its own space. And I actually got into security shortly after that from um, completing some Internet of Things device research, security research. And from there, I started working at Cyber Reason. I'm now a security strategist in our security team. I work on um, our infrastructure security and product security. So I'm very excited to talk to you guys about what MITRE ATT&CK is, why we at Cyber Reason really think it's important to align to it. I want to give this really cool example of mobile malware research that our team, our research team saw, and then talk about why it's important to align to MITRE ATT&CK for mobile and why it's really important for the future too, because it's not just about what we're doing right now, it's about laying that foundation. And I think that's one of the reasons why MITRE ATT&CK is so important. So as an organization, we think about MITRE ATT&CK a lot. Our research team aligns every piece of research that we put out to MITRE ATT&CK and um, whether it's mobile malware or just typical attacks on the endpoint. And there are a couple of reasons why, and they really do come down to knowledge sharing, whether that's purple teaming, whether that's having a red team be actually able to communicate with the blue team about what they're doing and why. It's really important to have a common language by which to communicate that. And that's what MITRE ATT&CK really provides to us. So it is really about not just classifying the tactics, techniques, and procedures that we're seeing, but also about being able to share that in a common language with the community, whether it's internally, with partners, with customers, or just with the business in order to really communicate value. Taking that a step further, why we actually map to MITRE ATT&CK for mobile is one, because it's really cool. They offer a really innovative approach to this problem that at the end of the day, not a decent number, but not as many as um, we wanna be seeing over the next few years are really working to approach this mobile security problem. The second is that mobile is actually a really important target that enterprises need to take seriously. 60% of corporate data is accessed through mobile devices. And that's a huge amount. And we don't even really think about it in classical traditional defense and security within enterprises. So it's really important to address. And the last thing that's really important is again, it's a communicating value in a clear way. What I really love about MITRE ATT&CK and MITRE ATT&CK for mobile is that we're actually able to use it to abstract the problem in such a way that it's now easy to understand and communicate others to others. We can take this really complicated piece of research that's really technical. Our blogs are like 40 pages long on this stuff. And we can condense it into something that anyone can understand. And that's really powerful. So let's talk about this piece of mobile malware. This is a threat that um, our Cyber Reason Nocturnus team, which is our threat research team, found called EventBot. It is a mobile banking trojan targeting financial services applications. It's looking to collect user data, and it was specifically targeting the US and Europe. What's so fascinating about this attack, besides it being pretty cool on its, just with this information, is that it actually targets over 200 different financial applications on Android devices. And these are not just some financial applications. These are really well-known applications. Things like Capital One UK. We're talking about PayPal business. We've got Revolut in here. There's Santander UK. There's TransferWise, which I personally have on my phone um, and love to use for getting money from overseas. There's also Coinbase. We've got ING Direct and Unicredit. 
So what's important to note about this is I assume that a lot of people that are actually on the Zoom right now have one of these apps on their uh, devices. But more than that, they're not all just targeted at the consumer. Some of these are also targeted at the enterprise. Things like, as we mentioned, PayPal business. They're looking to gather information and credentials from business applications as well as individual user applications. And that's super important when we're thinking about how things like mobile malware are actually going to affect the enterprise. So what our team did for this piece of research and what our team does for every piece of research is aligned to MITRE ATT&CK. What was really exciting about this is MITRE ATT&CK actually has MITRE ATT&CK for mobile, so we can align mobile malware we're seeing to each, state, each um, tactic that MITRE ATT&CK has for mobile. And you can see them here, and for anyone who's really familiar with MITRE ATT&CK, you can see how they're organized from tactics to techniques. And this gives us a really easy way to understand these different attacks and understand exactly what's going on and take a step back from the really technical details so we can get a better perspective for those people who may not want to dig into the research or may not want to be doing the research or may have other priorities. So this is really what I see as the best part of MITRE ATT&CK for mobile is that you can really abstract the problem in such a way that it's really easy to understand and communicate to other people. And as a computer engineer, I love abstraction. So this takes the cake. But what's really cool about it, at least to me, is what it allows us to do when we're talking about communicating this. Because we have that table, which is already useful on its face, but it's very useful for people who are in the security industry. But what's awesome is that gives us the basis to actually communicate this threat in a way that someone who's not even technical can understand. And I'm going to show you that here with this timeline. So we took that same piece of mobile malware and we broke it down into a timeline starting with initial access. What's happening in this research is an unsuspecting user is downloading EventBot, which is masquerading as a legitimate application. And what's so cool about this is we saw this so early on that we were actually able to see this application, this malware, iteratively improving itself in order to appear legitimate, ultimately with the goal of getting on the Google Play Store. Although we didn't see it on the Google Play Store because it was so early in the process, that was its end goal. Next, it looks to get control of accessibility features just by asking for them. And it starts to run in the background because again, it's convinced people that it's legitimate, that it's an application they should trust because they want to access the calculator or whatever they're pretending that this application is going to do. Next comes discovery, where since they have control of the accessibility features, which gives them such a wide control of the different um, ways that the device is choosing to collect information that they can actually really dig into some important reconnaissance information like the device info and the names of Android packages. And that's how they know which applications, if the applications that they're trying to target are on the device. They go further than that and they start actually tracking the device pin and collecting financial information, personal data, keystrokes, and even passwords. So for anyone here, and I'm sure no one here has done it because they are all good security professionals, but for anyone here who has actually copy pasted from their notes application, their password into one of their banking applications, this malware has that info now. Of course, we see them exfiltrate that to the attacker's C2 server, but this is where things get interesting because of course, as security professionals, we have two-factor authentication enabled. And so when the attacker goes to log into these accounts with the credentials that it just stole, perhaps we think, oh, ho, ho, I'm such a good security professional. I have two-factor authentication, so I will know and be able to stop this person from getting into my account. But here's the problem. The attacker has access to the place where most two-factor authentication goes. In many forms of two-factor authentication, you get a text sent to your device. And this malware immediately steals that message, sends any necessary information back to the attacker, and then deletes it. So not only do they have control of your device, they're tracking everything that you're typing, 
but then they're able to delete messages at will so that they can prevent you from knowing when they're accessing your accounts. So I, first of all, find this attack fascinating, but what I find really fascinating is how we're actually able to communicate this in a way where when I talk about this to non-technical people, it clicks for them why mobile malware is really scary. And that's because of the mapping that we have to MITRE attack for mobile. So what's really important and what I really want to think about and want you guys to think about when you're thinking about this problem is how is this a step in the right direction to actually being able to map these attacks more completely and to be able to communicate, which as an industry, we know is one of the biggest problems that we have is just communication and being able to communicate problems to other people. How can MITRE attack really help us to get out of the weeds and then actually communicate these issues to other people? And I think that, I hope, that this example really illustrates that and gives us an idea of what could possibly come next. Because I think that not only do we have MITRE ATT&CK for enterprise, we have MITRE ATT&CK for mobile, and I can see a world where those two need to combine. Because attacks don't stop at mobile devices, they don't stop at traditional endpoints, they can go across both. That's one of the main goals of mobile malware attacks is to get to other devices to get to other endpoints. And so I imagine there will be a future where we actually consider these to be all one in the same. And my hope is that we can use MITRE ATT&CK for mobile as the basis as we think about other types of attacks, like attacks on IoT devices or other devices down the line that we see. So I wanna thank you guys so much for attending my talk. I also want to give a big thank you to the MITRE ATT&CK team. They really made this so easy and so fun and I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to take any questions. You can feel free to email me if you have questions too. Um, check out our blog and feel free to contact me on Twitter or follow me at HackerBella. Excellent talk, Ali. And thanks again for all the reporting and all the contributions we've gotten from the um, from your team. It's been, it's been excellent collaborating with you. Uh, we had a couple of questions building up in the Slack, so definitely hop over there. But I just kind of wanted to ask one. Um, I think a lot of the community might resonate with yeah. your talk because, like you said, we all have phones. Mine's five feet away from me at any point. And like you said, I think a really interesting statistic you shared was that 60% of our corporate data is accessible from these devices. So it's something we really need to take seriously. But what is your advice to, like, a security team, maybe a smaller unit that's just getting started? You know, maybe they have a, an enterprise set up, but you, they do recognize, like you said, the importance of mobile. What are your what are your suggestions for first steps and how to start you know taking this seriously? Totally, um, I think that as we all know, small security teams have much bigger priorities. <laughs> so of course, it is always a juggling act with what you're going to prioritize. Um, one of the reasons why I think that mobile is so important is so and so interesting is because we do use it all the time, and especially now that we're working from home, it becomes so important to stay connected even when we're doing household activities. Like if you have to take your kids for a walk because they've been stuck inside all day, you're probably going to take your phone. You're probably going to have Slack or Teams on your phone and want to be accessing that in case something bad happens. So I think that the best first step that you can take is first working with IT very closely because of course, for most teams, IT controls mobile device management or EMM. And it's really important to make sure that any policies are up to date and all of the basics, basics IT hygiene is covered. And then um, really try to start doing some awareness training because not only is, can you access a lot of corporate data on the phones, but you're also three times more likely to fall for a phishing attack on a small screen, which is crazy. <laughs> so it's really important to just get people in that mindset where not to distrust their mobile devices, but to think about what they're doing with them more and not trust them immediately. Like I think a lot of advertising really convinces us that they're safe. That makes sense. And I think we had an interesting question from one of our speakers last from our last session. Um, you mentioned the event bot and kind of the banking element. Or do you see any other like major trends in the mobile malware space? Like, yeah, I know, typically, I think one of the themes from our last attack con was attacking the human behind the keyboard. And I think in this case, it applies perfectly to mobile, because like you said, it really, it's just uh, that phone is just the gateway into the mind of the human. And it's like, it's like, there's so many vulnerabilities that, you know, we can't patch as tech as like techies and engineers. It's, it goes through training, but um, 
I guess, long story short, what are, you, what are your kind of your forecast for trends, things that you're seeing now, as well as where do you think the future of this mobile malware is going? It's really fascinating. There are a couple of things that come to mind immediately. Um, of course, phishing, we all think of phishing when we think of security and like a huge security issue. But what's fascinating about mobile phishing attacks is that they're not really coming from email. They're coming from things like WhatsApp. They're coming from SMS messages. They're coming from social media websites. So I think that having to kind of shift our brains to thinking about a different type of phishing than we're typically used to is really important. I, um, as far as trends go too, we've seen, unfortunately, a lot of people pretending that they um, or masquerading their applications as things like CDC applications or World Health Organization applications. And as we really get into what will hopefully be a vaccine season, I think we'll probably see a lot more applications like that that are trying to trick people, especially when it comes to Android devices. Okay. And it goes back to trust, like you said, it's really, it's kind of seems like a central theme here. Yeah. I just had, I think one final question come up, a really good one. Um, do you have any, obviously you don't have the statistics off your hand, but what do you, what do you kind of your thoughts or themes regarding like hybrid attacks where people are using mobile as kind of a gateway to get to enterprise resources? Do you think that's kind of a, a very common occurrence or do you think it's, you know, actors are more kind of content with just getting device data directly from like, you know, iOS or Android? It's funny you say that because I actually do have a statistic about this. <laughs> um, 90% of mobile malware is trying to access other connected ports and different devices that it can get access to. So it wow. really is trying to move. I think that there are really two ways that mobile malware or two risks that come with mobile malware. One, whatever's on the device and two, accessing the enterprise network and getting to other devices. We can see this like if you don't think much to connect your phone to a Starbucks Wi-Fi, but what if it's not an actual Starbucks Wi-Fi, and then you go to connect your phone to the enterprise network, you can run into all sorts of problems. And so I think it's really, really important. And that's one of the things that I talk about a lot when I'm talking about mobile malware is not just what's happening on the device. What's really interesting is when we see it actually going from the device into the enterprise network and targeting other devices. So I think that's critical. Yeah, that, that's an amazing statistic. So thank you for sharing and thanks again for your talk. Um, you. Like I said, it's, it's been fantastic. I think this resonates with all of us. There's really some great knowledge to share. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie and Allie.